Sandy Moss again from my closet. Uh, uh, this is a, a recent addition to my closet, and uh, I, I thought it was one of the neatest things I've seen in, a, in quite a while. Uh, I was at the Brimfield Fair earlier this fall and uh, talking with a fellow who had some uh, cribbage boards, walrus ivy cribbage boards for sale, and they didn't really interest me that much. And I asked him if he had anything else, and he rummaged around in his in his bundle of things, and he came up with this that he had on, had on display, and it's a drawing, or a pen and ink drawing, with red frames, and it shows an Eskimo scene here. And I, I thought, well, this is fabulous. Uh, uh, and if you look at it closer, and you can see some of the, the features on this drawing. So the drawing that this fellow pulled out of his box was this, and just Clearly it shows an Eskimo type scene here. There's sky, ice down here, and some woodwork here, some stuff we'll, I'll explain, and then a bunch of sled dogs in the foreground, and the sun coming up just over the horizon here. This is probably the spring sun just starting to peak up after the after the darkness of the of the long uh, Arctic night, uh, the dogs are sled dogs, and they're staked out, which is usual for the way they they kept these animals. Uh, and it is signed over here is the fellow's name, which is George A. Agupuk. And George Agupuk is what we would call a listed artist. Uh, he's a, a well-known artist from from Shishmarik, uh, Alaska, uh, and it's, moreover, it's dated 1937. 1937 was 82 years ago, but that's really recent for signed Eskimo art. So this, this guy and two others from his town uh, began doing uh, this kind of art in the 1930s. So this is, is right at the beginning of this kind of stuff. The neat part about it too is that this is done on, on leather. This is seal hide that was used as the medium on which to do the ink and ink wash. And some of the details here show, first of all, this, is, this structure here is a cache, that is, it's raised uh, above, it's raised what's held here above the uh, ground level. And this is to keep, uh, you know, they would store food up here and clothing and so forth. And it was to keep first the dogs out of this because the dogs will eat anything when they're loose at night. Or, and also to keep marauding foxes, wolverines, polar bears, whatever might come and want to, to destroy the, the, the stuff here so it's raised above the ground. Some people think of this as, as being bodies of people being buried up here, but that's not what they did. This is, this is a cache to keep something stored out of the, out of the way of dogs. And you can see something else right here, and that is, I'm looking at it upside down, uh, there's a stovepipe right here. And this is the roof of a house. They're winter houses, which they dug down partway into the ground, down to the permafrost, and then covered it over with sod, with wood, with tarps. And they've got rocks on top here to hold the tarps down. And they, this one had a little stove inside, and the entrance is, is here into this, into this house. And I said, you see the sun coming up over here, and you see these dogs. Some of them are asleep, and some of them are not. And we see the signature over here. Kind of a nifty piece. This is, this is bordered with uh, uh, strands of leather dyed red and interleaved into the... Into the uh, the leather here to create a border. And the back side looks like this. The, the, the red isn't clearly uh, dyed here, but you can see how it's, it's all interleaved. Now, George Agapuk was a, an interesting guy. He was born in 1911. He, uh, uh, at, in 1930s, he suffered a broken leg and it became tubercular. That is, it had a tuberculosis infection and he was taken to a hospital to recover. It took him quite a while to recover. 
And, and while he was in the hospital recovering, and at this time he's 20-some years old, uh, he found he just liked to do something, and he drew, started drawing, and he'd draw on anything he could find, toilet paper, waste paper, and whatnot. And the nurses finally took pity on him in this hospital, and they went and bought him some art supplies, some paper, and some crayons, and, and uh, pen and ink. And he just went wild. He became a very, very uh, avid artist and started producing these things. Also, he made Christmas cards to give to people uh, at that time. An interesting thing that happened in that time, too, a very famous American artist named Rockwell Kent. I'll, I'll just stick this next here. Rockwell Kent was an American artist who visited Alaska. He visited Greenland. He went down and visited the Tierra del Fuego and among his journeys. Uh, and he was a, uh, a noted guy. This is, a, this is one of his, a print of one of his uh, paintings done in the 1930s. And it's entitled, Now What? And Now What? And it's one of these depression uh, 1930s thing, which is showing people that are kind of destitute and not knowing what's going to happen uh, with the economy or anything else. But Rockwell Kent uh, had a great following in this country, uh, and his paintings today are... are uh, worth some money because he's so well known. Uh, but Rockwell Kent was befriended George Agapuk, uh, and he uh, he went uh, and wrote in the New York Times in 1937 about this guy Agapuk and what he and two of his colleagues were were doing in the way of Eskimo art. And he carried on a conversation uh, through the mails with Agapuk for quite a few years. So this guy has the imprintor of a of a quite famous uh, American artist. So all in all, I think it was a, a neat thing that this guy pulled out of the box and, and showed to me. And uh, uh, so I bought it. And I'm one of the happier things I bought that year. My wife was with me at the time. She wanted it, so I couldn't say no. So that's the story of George Agapuk and that, that little uh, sealskin painting.